So I'm here with my new assistant, this red spotted toad, and we are talking, we're talking about toads today. The reason why we're talking about toads is because, shh, I'm doing something. It is the start of the monsoon season, and once again, toads are hopping around everyone's yards and people are freaking out. Why are people freaking out? One of those toads, the Sonoran Desert Toad, or Colorado River Toad, sometimes called, can actually kill a dog if the dog chews on it. So we're gonna go through the top most common toads that people find in your yards, there are five of them, in the Phoenix and Tucson areas, and tell you how to tell it from the potentially dangerous kinds, or if it's just one of these little cute, cute squishy guys that are harmless. And then discuss a couple of ways that you can maybe keep them out of your yard or, or reduce the numbers that you're gonna see there. And then what happens if you do see your dog chewing on a toad and what you can do about it. So let's go. So we'll get right to it with this one. This is the one everyone's worried about. It's the Sonoran Desert Toad or Colorado River Toad. It's the same animal. And you'll notice right away they are the largest toad of the group. So if you see something that's the size of a large hamburger or a Nerf football hopping around, this is very likely what it is. They're usually a solid olive green color and they may or may not have some orange or brown spots. Not a high frequency of them, but they may be present. Usually they just appear as one color though. Other than the size, the big thing to look for is the enlarged elongated, tic-tac-shaped poison glands that are behind the eye, which some of the other species are not gonna have. The juveniles are obviously going to be a lot smaller, except they're gonna have a lot more prevalent orange or brown spots on them. They're still gonna have that elongated poison gland behind the eye though, which is going to differentiate them from other toads that look very similar at that age, which are those red spotted toads. This is a red spotted toad. Red spotted toads are super common. People see them all over the place any time of year, as long as there's moisture. And they're a lot smaller than the Sonoran Desert Toad. Probably the biggest differentiator is the poison gland behind the eye is going to be round rather than elongated. So if the toad you're looking at has that round poison gland rather than the long one, it's not a Sonoran Desert Toad. You don't need to worry about it. Next up is the Woodhouse Toad. Woodhouse's toads are also really common. They're larger than red spotted toads, but smaller than Sonoran Desert Toads. Like the Sonoran Desert Toad, however, they do have elongated poison glands behind the eye. But what you can look for to tell if it's a Woodhouse's Toad is that line down the middle of the back. These guys have that line almost every time. So if you see a toad and it has that stripe going straight down the middle of the back, it is not a Sonoran Desert Toad. It's nothing to worry about. Very similar in appearance to that Woodhouse Toad is this Great Plains Toad. They also, just like the Sonoran Desert Toad, have an elongated poison gland behind the eye, but they have that stripe going down the back most of the time, and that's gonna be how you can tell it's nothing to worry about, it's not a Sonoran Desert Toad. And last on the list of the most common toads you're gonna see in your yard is this, the Couch's Spadefoot Toad. These really look nothing like a Sonoran Desert Toad. They're a lot smaller, usually two or three inches or so, and can be a bright green, but really the big thing that sets them aside are elliptical cat eyes. So if you have a light that is shining on this toad and its eyes cinch up into a slit, then it is one of the spadefoot toads. And if you're in the Phoenix and Tucson areas, it's probably a couch's spadefoot toad. It's nothing to worry about. So obviously there's a lot of other amphibians in the state, but if I were to take a hundred of the amphibians that somebody sends me pictures of and asks to identify, almost all of them are gonna be in these five toads. So this should cover you. And again, the only one you have to worry about that could potentially kill your dog is the Sonoran Desert Toad. The other toads might secrete a poison that could make your dog salivate or maybe throw up, but it's nothing that should be considered dangerous. And it's not a really good practice to let your dog run around eating all the toads and animals it finds in the yard anyway, so if that's happening, it's still a good idea to put a stop to it, even if it's not dangerous. So if you have toads in your yard and you don't want them there, the best thing you can do to try to get them to go away is to reduce the water sources that you have. Obviously, that's gonna be hard if you have a pool, but if you have a garden, AC drip, leaky hose, those kinds of things. If you have a Sonoran Desert Toad that's showing up and hanging around them and you get rid of the toad, new toads are gonna show up over there too. So for the safety of your dog, it might be a worthwhile conversation to decide whether or not you really need that one plant that the toad keeps hanging around. And what happens if you do find that your dog has been chewing on a Sonoran Desert Toad? So first, a disclaimer, I'm not a vet. So if your vet says something different than what I'm about to say, then listen to them instead of me. Get a hose, take the toad out of the dog's mouth and start washing the inside of the dog's mouth with as much water as you possibly can. You wanna just keep rinsing it and get it right up in there and get all the poison that could be in the tissue of the mouth out of there. Before and during this process, you should be on the phone with your 24-hour emergency vet. 
And if you just thought, well, I don't really have a 24 hour emergency vet, well, you should pause the video right now and go find one. Being prepared in advance can make the difference between your dog living or dying in the event of it eating a toad or being bitten by a rattlesnake. So it's not the kind of thing you start Googling at two o'clock in the morning, hoping for the best. Right now is the time to make those decisions. So that's pretty much it. Yes, toads can be a very dangerous thing for your dog, but the biggest things that you can do is be able to identify the ones that can't hurt them versus the ones that can't, and then identify some things in your yard that maybe you don't need that are providing water and attracting toads. If you're not sure what toad it is that you're looking at, get a good picture of it. You can email it to id at rattlesnakesolutions.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can with an answer. He says, enjoy the rest of the monsoon.